Good morning, Besta. How are you? It's so nice to be able to chat with you yesterday. Hope all is well in your little space of the world. <laughs> Just gonna see if a few more people are gonna jump on. Hi, Linda. Hi, Tony. <laughs> Oh, you survived your windstorm. That is good news. That is good news. We're supposed to, um, this afternoon, we have a chance of some 50 mile an hour winds. Um, but we never know, you know. Um, it's weird where we sit in, um, in Toledo. It seems like when weather is approaching the lake, a lot of times it will split and go north or go south. And we sit right in that corner where it splits. So a lot of times we don't get um, what they do, you know, just across the state line or even south of us. So it's always just, you know, we just wait and see what's going to happen. <laughs> Hi, Linda. Hi, Peggy. So um, we'll just chat for a few minutes. I want to tell you about the trip that Mary and I took to see Tony and Jean. And actually, they were invited us to their um, Stampin' Up! crafting event as guest speakers um, or guest demos. So we were in Waverly, New York and Sayre, Pennsylvania. And I mean, you literally like, felt like we went over a bridge and we were in another state. So I wonder where the line is, is you could have one foot in Pennsylvania and one foot in New York. <laughs> Tony, you'll have to let me know where that spot is because next time we come, I would love to get a picture where we're in two states at the same time. Uh, but we did this, uh, they had this wonderful event on Saturday. It was so much fun getting to meet in person some of the names that I see when we do our Facebook Lives. And I want to get out, uh, give a shout out to Donna, who she, she jokes about herself being a lurker. And all she was trying to be kind of humorous about is that she's afraid to say things um, in a chat while there's a live. So she, she watches, but she doesn't say anything. And I know there's a lot of people that just like to listen and they'll read the comments and, and never say anything. But once she told me that, I told her, I said, okay, so on Thursday, I'm giving you a shout out <laughs> so that she'll know that I know she's watching. Um, but we, we had a great, great time. Tony was a wonderful hostess. We stayed at her house. We got to meet her boy trying to connect Y'all, um, okay, it says it's back. Are we back? <laughs> um, anyway, um, I just had a red bar come across the screen saying it was trying to connect. So I hope we're good. Um, anyway, so um, we got to meet their families, and we went out Saturday night then to eat um, all together, with, and they brought their husbands, and it was just so great getting to spend time with them on that level. So maybe next week I'll show you uh, the project that I designed for their event and maybe we can do that quilt block next week. But I have something else I want to show you today. So I am going to flip the camera around and while I'm doing that, please say good morning to each other. I just need to rearrange some things. Um, if you watch every Thursday, you know the drill. So we'll get started. Try to go slow here. I don't want anybody getting motion sickness. Uh, okay, now wait, I got to find my little widgets here. There we go. Okay, just move that over. I'll move this over here. Oh, it looks good on the computer. And we will get ready to go. Hi, Eileen. Hi, Linda from North Carolina. Betty, hello. Hi, Lori. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Karen. 
and Peggy, and who else did I maybe miss? Hi, Mary from Northeast Ohio, and D Donna. Oh my gosh, I love you. You're here and you commented. Yay, that just made my day. Hi, Barb. Hi, Stephanie. Tony, you, you and Jean had the most awesome organized event. We had 25 ladies there. And I'll tell you what, Tony and Jean had this thing down so pat. It was, it ran so smooth. It was so much fun. Um, hi, Mary Ellen. Thank you for sharing. And hey, Jasmine and Sharon. Okay. Let's get going. I'll try to go back and say good um, hello to others um, here in a little bit. Hi, Judith from Southern Maryland. And Debbie's from Missouri. Yay! So I'm going to feed, I'm featuring the Heartfelt Hexagon because it's going to be my sentiment for the mystery um, quilt card today. I wanted to first show you a little tip. When you have a stamp set that has um, border, like an inside border, and there's a, a coordinating punch to go with it, I want to show you um, how I line that up. Because sometimes we can take the stamp out of the case and look at how easy this is to manipulate. Okay, and so it can be really easy to grab that, put it on your block, and then you stamp and you go to punch and the design isn't aligning, okay? So what I do is I take a punch out of my cardstock, and I'm going to use this as a template. I'm going to take my stamp and I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to set it right down into that uh, piece that I punched out. This would be the, the negative. And I'm going to make sure that it is sitting right in there. I can even push it out if I need to. But I'm using the edges and pushing that, that stamp there. That way, when I go to put lift it off, you know, put my block on top and lift it up, it should be, or very close to, the, you know, the shape of the punch. It should be really close. So then when I go to punch my image, I shouldn't be too wonky on one side or the other. I can come down a little bit there. And then when I punch it, Um, other than I could have been over a little bit. I mean, I'm pretty close. Um, not going to fret over that, but it helps you make sure that you're true to the uh, true to the punch, so to speak, so that it's it's not off. So I just wanted to share that little tip with you. That's going to be my sentiment. And then I went ahead while I had my hexagon, the same color. I, I'm going to end up layering these two together. Is, is Facebook acting up? You know, I was just saying the other day, well, no, it was yesterday when Vesta and I were talking on the phone. It was like, I just felt so fortunate that I haven't come across like these stamp, uh, these Facebook issues, but it looks like Facebook is um, trying to mess with me today. So if you have problems, I suggest going out and then coming back in and see if that helps. I'm going to keep moving along, okay? Unless this totally freezes up, but I don't think it will. So I'm going to layer these two later, and I will show you why. I'm just going to sit that over there in my little tray of pieces. And we can get started. We're going to do some cutting, okay? So that one inch by five and a half inch strip of basic white I showed you, we're gonna, we're not gonna cut that, but we're gonna need it. So I'm just gonna put that 
over to the side. And then I had you cut two, I believe these are one inch square. Yeah, two one inch squares of a designer series paper. And then I um, cut two one inch squares of a coordinating color of cardstock. It could have been designer series paper, but there isn't a solid in the lemon lolly in the designer series paper. So that's why I brought out the cardstock. And what we want to do is we are going to cut each one of these squares into four triangles. So, and I am going to just hover my blade over the top and then I'm going to push it down and I'm going to go up and down. That cuts it in half. We're going to cut it in half one more time. I'm going to use the bumpers on the trimmer. I'm going to line the mountain point there in the track. And we're going to cut this in half again. So do that to all four of your triangles. Okay, so just close that really um, gently because I don't want it to move my, my triangle there. Um, if there's anybody watching from Florida, I, I hope that... Um, you're doing well. I saw the flooding that's going on down there right now, and I can't believe how much rain they've gotten within just a few hours. So I hope you're safe. And if you were, if you got any of that, I, my heart goes out to you can't imagine what uh, dealing with any kind of flooding is like. Okay, this is the last one. I'm just going to use that little bumper up there and put that point in the track. And here's our last one. Okay, so we've got all of our triangles now. And so I'm just going to gather these and put them off to the side so that when we start creating our quilt pattern, I have them. Let's just move this one out of the side, out of the way. So now what I, another little tip I want to show you is, um, how I'm going to cut the card base. So my card base is four and a quarter, four and a quarter by 11. It's still a half sheet of cardstock. We're just cutting it the long way so that it's a top fold. Okay. Um, I want to take a little bit off of the front. I'm not going to score or I'm not going, it's already, I scored it at, at uh, five and a half, but I'm not going to fold and burnish it yet. When, have you ever noticed that when you fold your card and you burnish it, that little, um, that little mountain that's created on the score line when you, you know, push your scoring blade in, once you fold your card and burnish it, that gets a little wonky. And I want a smooth cut at the top. So I am not going to fold and burnish yet. What I want to do is I want to come over an inch and a quarter. Now you can do this from any side. I'm actually going to take my piece from the left side, but you could take it from the right. So what I'm going to, I'm at one and a quarter 
I'm going to put it right on the um, line here on the cutting blade. I'm lining that up with the score, the score line. I don't know if you can see it. And Facebook is being really wonky on me. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut straight down then. Because I'm going to take this little flap off. I want to make sure I'm right on that. So what I did was I... And you can either cut it off with your snips or you can put it back in your trimmer. I'm going to put it back in at five and a half and I'm going to bring this and I'm going to take this piece out. See how nice and clean that edges when you cut it? It would be ripply if I had um, folded and burnished it first. At least I find it to be like that. So now I'm going to fold it, square up my corner, and now I'm going to burnish. Whoops. Okay. This is that, this is that how it looks. This is what I was telling you about. It's really hard to get that nice and smooth once you've created that crease. So I always do it before I do my cutting before I um, burnish if I'm taking a piece out. Okay, this is scrap, but you can use it for something else. So I think that's it for the cutting. Set your card base aside. We've been doing a lot of quilt blocks. We are going to do something a little different. We're going to let our designer series paper shine on the front and we are going to do a quilt border. And that border is going to sit right here with this negative space that we created, um, but on the inside of our card. Okay, so we're gonna make a, a border here. Okay, so what we wanna do is on one side of this strip, I'm gonna have Lemon Lolly. On the other side, I am going to have my Knight of Navy. I'm going to start on my left hand side and we're going to lay this out. Okay. It's always good um, to just kind of do a dry run here. I'm going to take the long edge of my triangle and I'm going to put it down here in the bottom uh, left corner. Okay. Can you see that? And then what I'm going to do is I am just going to keep putting down some triangles. And when I get to the top, I should have half of my triangle hanging off of the uh, basic white. My quilt border is going to have three colors. It's going to be the lemon lolly, the white, and the night of navy. If you, if you want one of your rows to be a different color than white, then make that your one inch by um, five and a half. So here I'm getting down to my last one. And I'm hoping that it'll turn out that this point right here, the mountain peak of my triangle, I'm hoping that it's going to align right with the top of that basic white strip. Sometimes I, you might have to overlap this point here with another block, but try to get that point to come out 
right along the top of that strip. Okay, so um, once you like your layout and you've got your pieces, you know, you know where they're going. Now we're going to glue them down to that side. And I don't like to push down very hard with my glue because I might have to come in and, um, you know, wiggle some things around. So I'm just going to set it in place. Using the border of that basic white strip as my outside edge. Almost forgot to use my handy little tool here. Get that out of the way. Now, if you have a little bit of spacing in between your triangles, don't fret too much about it. They don't have to be touching each other. You also don't want them so far away from each other either that it loses the pattern that we're going to create. Now, if you're um, ahead of me right now, don't start the other side until I give you the tip that um, I want to share with you. And then I do have something I want to show you at the end. If you want to mass produce these borders, I want to show you how you can do it kind of like all at once. And I think you get like four, four strips. I might have to just overlap that one just a smidge, but that's okay. Now I'm going to press down my triangle. So you've got this border here. Now we can start at the bottom again down here, or you can flip it around and do it the same way that you did this side. But what we want is the, the top and the bottom should have a, a triangle that is coming off the edge because we need to create our chevron pattern. Okay, so this triangle's hanging off the edge and this one's gonna hang off the edge. If I flipped the piece around, I could just do it exactly how I did the first one and I would end up hanging off the edge there. Okay, so let's, let's just do that. Again, I just wanna lay these out. Kind of see what my spacing is going to have to be like. The embossing folder that I'm going to use today is the um, eyelet embossing folder. And I'm actually going to emboss and not deboss. Okay, so I can come down a little bit because that one was hanging off a little too far. Okay, let's get to putting this side down. Just make sure you're going to the outside edge there. I don't want to see my basic white. Got a little heavy with the glue there, so I'm going to be very careful when I'm putting this down that I don't want all that glue to come out onto my um, the middle uh, stripe here that we're creating with this chevron. I 
I'm afraid to look over at Facebook to see if it's acting up or not. Oh. And you are going to have um, some squares or some triangles left over, which is good because, you know, sometimes with our cutting, um, we might not be happy with one. So we're going to take it off and you have some extra pieces. Um, as backup then. Okay. Oh, shoot. I didn't have to put glue all the way to the end. When you do that last um, triangle, try to remember not to put glue where you don't need it because now it's going to get on my scissors. I'm going to try and wipe some of it off. But I get in a rhythm, and next thing I know, I'm just putting glue down, and it's like, oops, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> I don't know if that happens to anybody else. But I don't really want to gunk up my scissors too much. So I'm just going to wipe that off and then make sure that I am. That that is flush right there. And now you can flip it over and you can cut off the ends that are hanging off. Okay, and this is going to be our quilted, this is going to be our quilt piece to our card. This is um, going to be our border. Um, you don't always have to do a quilt card that is a square block. Uh, what I find um, as I'm doing the blocks is I'm running out of ideas for card layouts. <laughs> so I thought, oh, why not? Let's, let's work with some borders. Um, and uh, see how that goes. So I am going to put this in the eyelet board uh, embossing folder. I'm going to take it over to my machine and I'll be right back and I'll show you the quilting. Okay. So this is the embossing folder that I'm telling you about. This is the eyelet. And I am just going to Position that between the two rows. Come on. I know I'm being a little picky here, but... Okay. So I am going to emboss this. I have uh, four cards I want to show you with the different papers from the Mediterranean Blooms and some different colorways that I did the border. Okay. But here is my quilted, my quilted border. Let's get these pieces out of the way. Okay. So now I'm going to bring in my card base. And I am also going to bring in this three inch by five and a half piece of designer series paper. This is going to cover the whole front of the front of our card. Okay, but before I glue it down, I like to play with um, the placement here. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for contrast from this paper and my border. See how if I put it down with the lemon lolly, there's no contrast really between the two. I mean, you can see the different color, but I'm looking for contrast. But if I flip this around, now I've got better contrast with my paper. Or do you, I mean, to me, I have better contrast. That Knight of Navy is very bold and, um, I think it looks better next to all of these blues than the lemon lolly. It's totally what your preference is. So before we, we glue this down, we'll go ahead and we'll adhere that piece of designer series paper. And again, it's going to take up 
the whole front. I'm just squaring it up here in the corners. And our border is gonna go the full length of the inside, but I wanna leave an even border on the left and the right. Okay, so once you've got that positioned, we can put our quilt border down. Just wanting to see an even border on both sides of it. And I've got some glue on here that I need to gently get off. I wish I would have found that before I embossed it. Because I don't want to tear my paper. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what? It needs to dry a little bit more. And then I know I'll be able to pick it right off of there. Can you see what I did? I had glue there. So I'll have to go back in with my little adhesive eraser and clean that up. But we're going to keep going. Because I don't have a piece that I can switch it out with. <laughs> okay. So there's that. And then I've got a piece, or I should have a piece, of lemon lolly that measures... Um, two and three quarters by five and a quarter. Oh no, I wonder if I used it. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna have to cut um, a piece. I saw it sitting there, obviously, and just decided to use it. So, I'll just cut another one. Five, five and a quarter. Now, if you want to stamp your sentiment on the inside, you can. And what I'm looking for is I want my border on top, the outside and the bottom to be even. So when I close the card, it hides the inside. Okay. Now I'm going to judge this up a little bit more with some designer series paper. Um, and I'm not going to do any stamping on the inside because I'm not quite sure how I want to finish it off on the inside. Oh, not too, not too shabby. Now I've got some die cut or not. They're not die cuts. They're fussy cut. <laughs> I have some uh, lemons here because I have like this whole stash of cut out uh, pieces from the designer series paper that were fussy cut. And I want... I want to put some on the outside. How did I have this? How did... Oh, wait. Maybe this was down here. Because my lemons need to be going the right way. Um, I don't want that one. Maybe we'll bring in this one. And I think I'm going to switch this out. I think I'm going to do that. And then uh, remember my sentiment. 
I'm going to go ahead and layer that to this extra piece I punched. And this was an afterthought because once I was putting the card together, it was like, oh, I don't want to see white when I turn, when I open my card. This is going to sit right in here. Or, you know what, I want something, I want something coming from that other side. Let's see what else I have here. I could do... Let's do this. That way, this opens up the area that I can put my sentiment. So I think we're going to do this. And I'm just going to glue this down. Now, if you have anything that's going to hang over the outside, make sure you're not putting glue. If it hangs outside of your card base. You can get by with a little bit sticking out, but not too much because it still has to go in the envelope. And then we'll put this piece down. Put it right up there at the top. And I'm going to snip this little piece off here. Okay. Now, when I come in with my sentiment, it can go right here. Now, I could even put more lemons. I could put more lemons, and it creates this really nice opening right here. That can. I think I'm going to put this lemon down, too. It creates a nice opening for your sentiment. <gasps> Boy, did you land the right way. I could have swore I had a good hold on that piece. I'm just going to layer it over the top of the other lemon that I had put down. And now it creates this really nice opening. I'm going to put dimensionals on my sentiment, but because my sentiment's going to overlap where you lift the card up and the border, I only want to put dimensionals on this side over here. So let's put some dimensionals on. I like dimensionals. I may overuse, I may not. Depends on how you feel about it. And you can decide how much you want it to overhang. Put it right there. So when you open the card, see why I wanted this to be green? Because then it matches the card base. And it, it's not another color. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some lemons to the inside. Maybe put a lemon there. Just something to judge it up on the inside. You want to make sure that if you're going to stamp that you have room for a stamped sentiment and you can still sign it here. You don't have to, you know, this is a good card if you don't have a whole lot that you're gonna write. You know, just short and sweet. But this fancies up the inside too. And here we're just letting the designer series paper do the work. I do not have the stamp set or the dies for this um, the suite. I do have the embellishments <laughs> um, because I could fussy cut the lemons. So I really didn't feel um, that I needed the whole thing. And 
we all know I'm going to end up getting it, I'm sure. But right now, I got to pace myself. <laughs> um, so there's, there's our card. All we need to do is put some bling. Here's the, um, the embellishments that go with that. And I think I'm going to use the Knight of Navy dots. And I'm going to put... I'm going to put them right in the center of our little flowers here. Okay, just going to put three of them. And that is our card. We did a quilted border instead of a whole block. Um, I hope that you found that interesting. And, um, you know, sometimes... Quilt blocks are, are wonderful, don't get me wrong, but sometimes I get kind of stumped on how am I going to change up the layout. <laughs> um, but uh, doing a border gives you a nice break. Oh, I forgot to put my button on the back. And I want to show you the other cards that I did, and then I want to show you um, what you can do to mass produce your borders, where you can get four done basically at the same time. So there's my button. It didn't go real fancy on the back with more designer series paper because I have a lot going on just in the card itself. So that's that card. Now let me show you the other ones. So here, um, this is just a different background. Still use the lemons. And this is the same border as far as it's the Knight of Navy and the Lemon Lolly. Okay. This one here, I brought in the oranges to bring out some of the Cajun craze that's in the design. I used designer series paper and then Lemon Lolly. So there are the oranges. This... This designer series paper right here really messes with my eyes. I feel like my eyes are going crossed whenever I'm looking at it. So to be able to hide a lot of it with the oranges um, really helped out. Because my, I don't know, there's something about that pattern that just makes my eyes go really, really wonky. And here's another orange one. Here I used um, Night of Navy cardstock. And then the designer series paper for my chevron. And on this one, I brought balmy blue in. Because it's one of the colors that, that coordinates with the designer series paper. I could have used boho blue also. And um, this wild designer series paper is what I used for the Night of Navy there. And then just put in a lemon. So you can see how different all the the cards look with the designer series paper and then, you know, the different borders. If you wanted your, let's say you want your third color not to be white, then decide on what that color is going to be and make that your one inch by five and a half inch strip and put your other two colors on either side and you'll get that third color. So, I hope you like the card. And now I want to show you how you can mass produce those, those strips there. And I'll let you screenshot this. I will try to work on a PDF this weekend. There's been a lot of things going on. Um... Please be patient with me. I, I'm going to get just a little bit behind, but um, I will try to catch up. So if you want to screenshot this right here, you can. I'll just leave it there for a moment. This piece of basic white is four by five and a half inches. Each one of my squares is 11 sixteenths. Three quarters of an inch is too big. 
11 16 or a hair over 11 16 should give you really nice um, spacing between your squares that you're going to set on point. So when it says 11 16 inch plus, it means I'm giving you permission to go just like a hair over, but three quarters of an inch will be too big if you make your squares three quarters of an inch. Um, might not be much and you can make it work, but um, I found that going that just a hair over that 11 16 which that's the line right behind three quarters of an inch worked pretty well. What you're going to do is you're going to draw three one inch columns on that piece of basic white. So I just put it on a piece of grid paper. And I know that every four squares is an inch. And then I just used my ruler. And I drew three one inch columns. Okay. And then that, that pencil line helped me place my squares on point because I am just putting the points right on that that line that I drew. Now, just like in the beginning, you're going to have an end that hangs off and you're they're going to be on opposite ends. You can't start out the same way every time because your points would be touching and you wouldn't have a chevron shape. So you have to offset it by half of your square. So once you do that, then you would flip it over and you would trim off your excess triangle so that this is square all the way around. And then you would subcut this piece into one inch strips, would be, which would be halfway down your yellow that creates now, when you separate it, you've got half of the yellow for one strip, half for another, cut it at one inch, and you can come out with four borders. And you can, you can emboss the whole sheet first and then subcut it. I would be careful how lofty or how much detail your embossing folder um, is. We've had some 3D embossing folders that create a lot of hills and valleys. And I really don't know, unless you've got a really sharp blade, how smooth of a cut you would get because your blade's going to run into all those little nooks and crannies. But if you either deboss or emboss with a pattern that isn't super, super detailed and you use a sharp blade, you should be able to subcut your one inch strips, and now you've got four borders done just like that. Okay, so um, when I do the PDF, I will have this detail in there also so that you can quickly produce four borders, four chevrons. This makes a pretty cool pattern just for the background of a card as I'm looking at it. It's like, oh, just throw a sentiment on there or something and um, that's a pretty cool pattern, but you get that chevron look. So um, that's today's mystery quilt card. And it's actually just a quilt border. So we'll just kind of bring these cards in again and show you how different they look. And I can't wait to see what your quilt borders are going to look like. When you're done with your card, if you would share a picture of it in the group Quilt Cards and More, um, we would like to see what you did. You can inspire us, and we will try to inspire you with the way our cards turned out. And then um, you can get a, a lot of ideas that you can use on your next quilt border card. So you might see some color combinations that you really like that someone used um, by sharing 
our cards, it really helps expand um, our creativity and broaden our horizons. If, especially if it was something that your mind's eye couldn't quite see, if somebody else does it, then you won't be so afraid to go try it yourself. So there you go. There's today's project. Um, did I miss any questions? Um, oh, thanks, Karen. Uh, just try to offer some tips to um, uh, help it go a little easier. Uh, Jill, it has to be five. Did directions say five on the white strip? Um, let me go back. If it did, it should have said five and a half. That was a typo. Oh, Lord have mercy. Please tell me that I didn't do that. Um, let me go back to the chirpy card maker. In trying to get the dimensions up, I could have left off something. Oh, that's the lie. We don't want that. Oh, Lord. Please tell me I did it right. Oh, my goodness. I did say five. Oh, you guys, don't be too mad at me. I mean, oh. You're probably like, my square is not turning out for me. Well, I wonder why, Julie, because you forgot the half inch. If there's a silver lining, they're just one inch squares of paper. And it's something that's easy to start over. Um, I, I, I apologize. I totally forgot the half and went right down to the next thing that you needed. I am going to edit this really quick um, so that it's correct for anyone who s goes back and wants to see what it is. There it is. Five and a half inch. Save. Okay, Jill, thanks for catching that. And somebody might have already caught it too. Um, I didn't scroll back through all the comments, but I did see Jill's, um, Jill and, and the person who was answering uh, them. So um, I apologize for that typo. Um, okay, get out of there. Okay, so that's it, everybody. Have a really blessed Thursday. Um, I'll be checking in to see what your creations look like. And can't wait to see what designer series paper you used, what you chose for your for your borders, uh, in your the colors that you're going to put in your chevron border. And uh, I will have to fix that boo-boo right there. Don't keep looking at that one because <laughs> I got to clean that up. Um, I'll be uh, talking with everybody soon, so I'll, we'll just see you later.